a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. Here's something that you don't hear us talk about frequently. ETF fee wars. Our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, is going to fill us in on what's going on with that. So these fee wars have been going on for a while? Yes. So everybody has been cutting expenses and offering something for free mm -hmm. in order to attract customers. And uh, major players like Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, Shaw, Fidelity, they have been aggressively cutting their expense ratios and other fees. And uh, Vanguard now offers commission-free trading on 1,800 ETFs, wow. including ETFs issued by their own rivals. And uh, this means almost all ETFs are avail available for commission-free trading on Vanguard's platform. The list does not include leveraged and inverse ETFs because mm -hmm. they are mainly intended for you know, short-term trading or hedging purpose, whereas Vanguard intends to attract more long-term focused sure. investors. And then, uh, you know, uh, Fidelity launched uh, two zero-fee index funds last week. Yeah, I was gonna ask you last about that. Week. Yeah. So, those on those two index funds they charge nothing the fee is zero there is no minimum investment either right. but then and, how do they make money uh, and uh, yes so uh, in addition to z those zero fee um, index funds they also cut expense ratios on many other existing index funds and how do they make money mm -hmm. uh, so one purpose of introducing these zero fee index funds or commission fee free trading is to attract new customers, new money right. uh, uh, to their platform and then offer them some more lucrative higher oh. fees products. I see. And also, uh, you know, uh, fund managers, uh, they are able to make additional money uh, via securities lending now. Uh, so it's not impossible to earn money on a zero fee index fund mm -hmm. or an ETF. Uh, and uh, as you know, AUM expands, the cost of managing a fund, whether it's an index fund or an ETF, that goes down dramatically. So that is why for bigger players, it is easy to cut expense ratio even to Zero. So is it the cost consciousness of the investor driving this, or is it being driven on the company side? Investors have become very cost conscious now. In fact, over the past couple of years, we have seen that they have been moving their money mainly to lowest cost, cheapest ETFs. So that uh, these moves are uh, you know, intended at attracting customers mm -hmm. and it is possible because they have these avenues of security lending and costs are coming down so it is possible that we may see a zero fee ETF also pretty soon. So what are we looking at uh, today? We're going to look at a, a couple of ETFs here. Are these zero fee? These are three basis points fees ETFs. These are the cheap, cheapest ETFs on the market as of now. And these are very good ETFs. They provide exposure to the entire stock market. And I think they, they can be used by investors for building the core of their portfolio because it's very cheap to access a diversified portfolio of the basically all stocks in the U.S. stock market using these two ETFs. And I would like to add that while it is possible to have a zero fee ETF mm -hmm. sometime soon, but there is not much difference between zero and three basis points. Okay. If you invest even $10,000 and see the difference in future value of an ETF charging zero or an ETF charging three basis points, the difference even after 10 years would be almost almost insignificant. But getting in, it's that 0% number that works on the mind. Yes. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Investors, and uh, all customers, they love free. Anything yeah. that is free, zero fee, is good to attract clients. Right. So let's take a look at this first one. iShares Core S&P Total U.S. Stock Market ETF. 
So the digger is I taught. It provides access to the entire U.S. stock market, ranging from some of the smallest companies to the biggest companies. So for looking at uh, you know further details of the CTF, you can go to the code page on zax.com and through there. Uh, through the link on code page, you can go to the external home page of the ETF and you can look at further details. It provides access to more than 3,400 stocks in the U.S. Um, stock market and it has an AUM exceeding $15 billion. It's a pretty po popular ETF. And on the, co on the external home page, you can also look at the portfolio. And as, as expected, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, JP Morgan, these are the biggest holdings in the fund. And again, as expected, uh, IT is the biggest sector in terms of exposure, accounting for almost 25%, uh, followed by financials and healthcare. Okay. And Schwab has the U.S. broad market ETF. The ticker is SCHB. This mm -hmm. is also a pretty similar fund. So depending on which platform you have your portfolio and which platform you use for trading, investors can use also use this ETF pretty similar uh, and this also charges just three basis points in expense ratio and an excellent ETF. It holds more than 2,400 stocks again ranging from some of the smallest to some of the largest companies in the U.S. equity market. It has more than 12 billion in assets under management. And for this also, you can go to the code page on zax.com and uh, uh, look at further details by going to the external home page. And as I mentioned, pretty similar ETF. So if you look at the portfolio, again, you will see that Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, same names, have the largest exposure. Uh, and. IT has about a quarter of the portfolio followed by financials and healthcare. Okay. Do you own either one? I do not. All righty. Thank you for that. And don't forget, more ETF information always exists in the ETF section of Zax.com. Use the Funds tab in the top toolbar on the homepage to get to it. Don't forget also, Nina has an ETF podcast that you'll probably find interesting. A lot of different uh, things being discussed in that podcast. You can find that on the podcast page of Zax.com. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.